Hello, and welcome back to the second part of making your own dinosaur mask. So if you follow me up until this point, we should have our pattern for our hood, all the fur has been cut out, and it's ready to go. Or if you're using any other material, you're not specifically limited to using fur. It just makes it a lot easier to do these kind of projects, at least in my personal opinion. Once all the pieces have been cut out and labeled properly so you know which ones connect where, you do need to make sure that you pin them all up so that you can sew them together. A lot of times I get people who ask me, is there an alternative to sewing fur? Technically, yes. You could hot glue your seams if you absolutely needed to and you don't have the proficiency in sewing. But I would not recommend it, as hot glued seams tend to look really bad, they feel uncomfortable, and they tend to break down within a year or so and need to be repaired. It's better just to take the time to learn how to sew. Trust me, it's a vital skill that you will find so useful in the future. Once you pin all of your pieces together, and you make sure that everything lines up, which is very important, <laughs> Initially, when I was doing this right here, I sort of screwed up, and I did not double check my black pieces to make sure that I had them on correct, and I ended up sewing them on backwards, so I had to flip them over and redo it. So word of advice, always double check and make sure that all your pieces line up properly, because that right there was where I screwed up the first time. Once it's all sewn together, you simply position it on the mask and glue down your seams. Unfortunately, the evil camera wizard strikes again and I did lose the footage of me gluing down this piece of the mask, but if and when I do another one in the future, I'll show you guys how to glue down these edges. But it's pretty simple, you just roll the edge and then tack down using hot glue just along the edge of the raptor mask. That way it hides the seam perfectly and it helps it transition between the two. The next thing that I worked on were these spikes. Pretty simple enough, just basic spike shapes you sew along the edge, and then when you're ready you turn them inside out so that they can be stuffed full of fluff and placed on the head. Now granted, this is totally optional, and your character may not have spikes, or maybe they have a boatload of spikes. There are all kinds of different ways to do it. I particularly wanted these lightweight plush spikes on my character's head just because I felt like it gave it that more raptor-esque appearance. And plus spikes are just cool and I like them. <laughs> I often find that using small little bits of polyfill and using the end of a chopstick to stick it down into the tip to make sure that it's very nice and firm will help it hold its shape for a lot longer. You could always use scrap bits of shaped fur, or maybe if you chop up foam and you have a bunch of little bits of shrapnel foam, you could use those. Personally, I prefer polyfill, but to each their own, I suppose. Once you reach the desired rigidity of your spikes, it's then time to attach them to your mask. Now, there are two different ways to do this. One is to have the hood inside out, cut a small little hole in it, and then sew it as if you were sewing a blanket, so to speak. Like you would stick the spike through the hole and then just sew it into the hole and turn it inside out and then stuff it so that it would be relatively the same thing. I personally prefer to sew on spikes like this when they're on the mannequin head because it helps make sure that they will go exactly where I want them to when the head is being worn. Personal preference, there are both ways to do it. Just uh, experiment and see what works for you. The stitch that I just used to close up that end so nice and flush is known as a gathering stitch or a purse stitch. It's really easy to do. You just run the thread all around and then pull it tight as you stick the loose bits of fabric inside the material. It will fold it all in nicely, tie it off, and then you can just ladder stitch your spikes onto the hood. Something important to note if you are attaching spikes or ears or anything loose like this, don't make them overly tight on the fabric. You do want them to sit just loose enough that it stays attached and hides the gap, but you don't want it to be 
too, too strong and too tight. Otherwise, it can actually bunch up your hood and distort the shape, which is a bleh. Nobody likes that. A lot of it will just come with trial and error. You'll find your first couple of projects may look a little bit meh and you may not quite like them. Alternatively, if you really don't feel confident trying to sew something like this, you could always just brush the fur out of the way, put a healthy daub of hot glue down, and then just hot glue the spikes into place or whatever it is you're gluing. You can hide the transition by simply brushing the fur up over top of it. I spiked up a little mohawk in the front right there just because I wanted to see how it was going to look. And then just continue down the hood as you attach more if needed. I did make a bit of an oopsie daisy here and when I was attaching these spikes I left a little bit too much of a gap. I ended up having to pull up this one that I'm attaching now and move it up a little bit higher because there was just too big of a gap and I didn't want my spikes to get buried in the back of the neck. This was the first time I've ever done a project like this, so it was a big learning experience and I definitely learned a lot from it and I hope that by sharing my progress videos like this it helps you guys learn because I absolutely love sharing the kind of things that I learn with you guys. I think that's an awesome way for one creator to show another how to do something and it's just generally fun to share creative stuff. <laughs>the spikes were all attached, it was now time for my big undertaking with this project. Because I designed this raptor to be a Utah raptor, she has feathers on her head. And I wanted to make sure that these feathers had that real feather appearance, so I actually went out and purchased real dyed feathers. I only ever use humanely acquired feathers in my projects, so I did make sure that these were obtained from a company that only collects feathers humanely as they fall out. They were never cropped from a bird. It's then a tireless process of putting a small daub of hot glue into the bottom of each quill, hand placing it, and letting it settle into place until I was happy with how it appeared. This process took so long I cannot even begin to describe how long it took. Hand placing each individual feather was so exhausting, but the end result just, oh, it speaks for itself. I can't wait till you get to see it later on in the video. Or if you've seen the thumbnail of the video, I'm, I'm sure you've seen that as well. <laughs> I hand placed these big long primary feathers because I wanted them to look sort of like a feathered crest like cockatiels have. I noticed that in a lot of, what what's the term? artistic renditions or art, artist envisions maybe I, I forget the the term but it's like because we don't physically know what dinosaurs looked like with flesh and bone on them we only know what their bones look like we can only speculate what their appearance may have been but from what we've seen many of them did have very bird-like crests so this was a design that i really wanted to incorporate in my character and the community absolutely loved it it, I guess I was the first one to have done something along this lines because I hadn't seen anybody else use feathers on their suit heads like this, or at least on their raptor masks. And I don't know, I like being the first to do something because I sort of feel like a pioneer of saying, step outside your comfort zone. If there's something that you see everyone else has done, think about what hasn't someone done. Try to branch out, do your own thing and be unique. And that's exactly what I did here, and now you would not believe how many feathered raptors are popping up. <laughs> it's amazing, I feel like I've started my own species with it, but they're existing dinos, so anybody can make feathered raptors, and I look forward to seeing how many are there in the future. Plugging individual feathers like this did take a very, very, very long time. Two hours later. Like, even two hours, I mean... That, that's, believe it or not, that is 150 feathers in that head right now. That is 150. It doesn't look like it because of how closely they're clustered together, but oh my goodness gracious. And I'm not even halfway done. And now we begin the process of placing all my red feathers. Now, these ones were a chore. I had to order them online to get enough to be able to finish this head, and I went ahead and ordered 200 of them. 
I also ordered, I think it was like 150 black ones or 200 black ones, I can't remember, but those will come in later. When prepping each quill, I tend to snip off the majority of it right near the base of the feather so that I can make sure that it sits really flush with the head. And then each individual one had to be given a little dollop of glue. I pull up the fur fabric, stick the feather quill in, and then push the fur back over top of it. This hides the transition between feather and fur and makes it really look like a natural thing that was just made like this. It doesn't look like it was attached, it just looks like it's growing from it. And that's exactly the kind of effect I was going with. I've done this with a couple small scale projects and I even did it on a couple of my sculptures, I think. I'll throw a picture on screen of one of my sculptures to show how I hide the details of feathers and stuff like that. It is super time consuming, but it's so much fun and it's so cool to look at. It doesn't look like much at first and it definitely is a project that takes patience because as I initially started working on it, it didn't look like it was going to work and I started to get afraid that I'd wasted all my time and that I'd ruined this fur and had to completely restart. But the more I placed feathers and the more I worked, the more it all started to come together. The other side of the head, trying to match the symmetry, that was definitely a struggle. But I am really happy that I went through the effort of doing it because it just comes out looking so darn cool and I'm so happy about that. Five hours later. Boy, I tell you, there is no words that can describe how long placing feathers by hand takes. Over 500 hand-placed feathers. They're all soft, they bounce around. I'm just so happy with how it turned out. It, it was definitely effort well worth it. And the transition between the scales and the feathers is so small that you can barely tell where one ends and the other begins. Her mouth is finished with her pearly whites. I put a small jaw piece in there and maybe eventually I'll add a tongue. beautiful customized raptor mask. It's hard to believe that this thing actually started out as a simple little $13 mask that I picked up from Target that was designed for kids and with enough hard work and patience I was able to turn it into this amazing thing. And if you'd follow me through all these videos, I greatly appreciate you taking the time to watch them. Seriously, I love being able to share what I can do with others in the hopes that you'll learn something from it or at least be entertained by it. If you have any requests for certain videos you'd like to see, or maybe more in-depth tutorials, feel free to leave a comment below and let me know. I always take the time to read my comments, and I always consider your suggestions. And if you've made a raptor mask, I would absolutely love to see it! You can find my email down in the description, or on screen now. And yes, you do have to include the periods, they're there for a reason. If you want to go ahead and send me pictures of your mask, I would love to see what you've managed to create. Seeing others work always inspires me and drives me to try and create new things. And I just love being able to interact with my community. Send me some pictures and I'll check them out. Who knows, if I like your design enough, I may even do some fan art for you. <laughs> Speaking of fan art, oh my goodness gracious! When I first showcased this raptor mask on TikTok, everyone just blew me away with all of their amazing reactions and then the fan art floodgates had opened. I have received more fan art of my Velociraptor than I've received of Nefertiti and Winza combined, which is crazy. But I'm so incredibly thankful for all of these beautiful works of art that others have given me. Whenever I make fans, I get all giddy because I feel like I'm just a person. I don't really do anything special that makes me above and beyond. I just make content that I feel I enjoy and that others may enjoy as well. And the fact that so many others enjoy it and make me fan art, I just... 
I turn into a melty puddle of happy, and thank you guys so much. I always jump for joy whenever I see a new fan art in my inbox. Thank you all so very much. Getting all this amazing support from others on TikTok, here on YouTube, Facebook, DeviantArt, Discord, all my social medias, I love your support. But if you'd like to go a step further and support me even more, consider checking out my Patreon. Even $1 a month will get you on this screen you see here. And there are two individuals that I really have to go above and beyond to thank. Osmium Dragon and Draxfur. These two lovely individuals have been holding strong at the Silver Tier, helping me make more content like this for you. Thank you guys so very much for your outstanding support. It means so much to me. If you'd consider becoming one of my patrons, you can click the link in the description or follow the one on screen now. You don't have to, but I would appreciate it. Some of the tiers even include free artwork as rewards. How neat is that? But anyways, I do want to thank you so very much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day and a fantastic life.